Shalom, brothers and sisters. North Korea faces hunger as Kim Jong-un shows off new Russian horses. Now, this is today's news story, just to give you a glimpse of who they have to deal with. North Korean citizens are suffering from ongoing food shortages and recent flooding. The North Korean leader has gone and imported over 20 expensive horses from Russia. This marks the first import of Russian horses since November 2022, when North Korea received 51 of these horses. The agency also added that the horses are microchipped. So the horses are ready for the new world order. They already have their chips built in, but they are extremely expensive, beautiful musculature, very docile, stunning animals, apparently, and why Kim Jong-un wants them it is known as his family's choice horse and his focus is his comfort his luxury his image his horses his weapons his army his nukes his people are tools cogs in a machine and he can do with them as he pleases because they almost practice a type of deification of him and his father extraordinary beings they call them they have pictures of them in their homes so if your home is going to get flooded in north korea you have to rescue the portraits before you rescue your children or animals or your own goods because if the portraits get damaged you might get shipped off to a labor camp for the rest of your life that's just the normal people now we're not even talking about christians when you get to Christians, it ratchets up quite a few pegs. Christians caught with a Bible in North Korea have faced death and had their families, including children, thrown in prison for life. North Korea offers freedom of religion to citizens on paper, but not in practice. It has imprisoned tens of thousands of Christians, according to a State Department report now two years ago already. Open Doors USA has reported that for Christians in North Korea, life is a constant cauldron of pressure and capture or death is only a mistake away. Christians are considered a hostile class in the Songbun system in which people derive status from loyalty to the state and its leadership. Christians, Odusa reported, that they are regarded as the lowest in society and are constantly vulnerable and in danger. An entire family, including their two-year-old child, were imprisoned following the discovery of their religious practice and possession of a Bible. A two-year-old child went to prison for life because his family or her family had a Bible. A report from the NGO Korea Future documented a shocking incident in which a man caught praying was nearly beaten to death by guards. Another incident involved a Korean Workers' Party member found with a Bible. He was taken by authorities to an airfield and executed before a crowd of thousands. This sounds like something from the medieval ages, but it's happening now over these years that we're living in. North Korea again topped Open Door's world watch list of the 50 countries with the worst record and levels of Christian persecution in 2024. More than 365 million Christians are persecuted around the globe, an increase of 5 million since last year. The findings highlighted that two in every five Christians persecuted are from Asia, and the most violent and murderous persecution of Christians is in Africa. Additionally, there's a 70% increase to church closures in 2023, mostly in China and India. So that gives you a snapshot of the situation. And that's why I'm living in Africa. I live very close to these places where there is this mass persecution going on, the murdering of Christians. <coughs> My heart is with these people and that's why we have such a drive to get bibles in their own languages into their hands here and then my heart is really for these north korean christians that are sitting on the top of the list of persecution for their faith in jesus christ and not just that they are also suffering along with the populace because of this madman who's in control with food and all sorts of issues like that quality of life it is crazy at the moment 
Now, what happens is, as they rank the most dangerous in the world for Christians, they're starving. They don't have access to free worship, to the Bible, to anything. The Bibles and Christian materials they have are holdovers and leftovers from World War II that is smuggled underground between people. And sometimes they don't even tell their families that they're Christian because their families will turn them in in exchange for a status bump and upgrade in society that might lead to a better living standard or more food. Uh, it's a historic food shortage taking place right now in North Korea. Now we know there's food shortages all over the world, but specifically in North Korea and their crops failing and everything else, people dying, families desperate for food. North Korean Christians are asking amidst all of this, amidst all the chaos, they're asking for Bibles. Bibles. Their faith is stronger than ever. And the Lord is moving among them and they are growing in number underground, regardless of the threat and the persecution and the death. So by being part of that and participating in getting Bibles to them and not just Bibles, but food, we can actually be part of a work bigger than ourselves in another country far away. So as much as this ministry operates here in South Africa and Africa, neighboring African countries and doing what we can here, we make sure that we're involved in North Korea, we're involved in Israel, we're involved in all these countries, Iran, where we can make a difference to the suffering church that is growing by the power of the Holy Spirit on a daily basis and be with them, strengthening them in the moment. So to give you an example, due to one of our beautiful sisters here on the channel, Mandy, this morning, again, I was able to reach out to North Korea and start a process whereby they will supply 13 people. That's 13 families with a Bible for every single one of them that they will receive and a week's food. So 13 people's lives can be touched for the next week, sustainable food for the whole family that will keep them going and their own Bible. That Bible, they will memorize, they will study, they will smuggle between groups of Christians as that church grows. And so we continue those kind of efforts in the field. And that is you helping in the field as well. You might not physically be in the field here preaching or teaching or ministering or going on an evangelical crusade or any of those things that I'm doing, but you are by doing this, touching these lives and being part of being in the field. In it all, right now, while the king is in the field and we are ready to go, we are rolling up our sleeves and we're getting busy with the work of God. So bless you. Thank you very much. And again, I just wanted to share that. It's exciting. It always does my heart good every time we can do it. And we do it regularly. And every single time we know that we'll never meet those people now. But when we get to heaven, when we go in the Arpazo and the Rapture, we're going to meet so many people from North Korea, Iran, Israel, all over the world that were touched because we bothered to be involved, that we bothered to say, Hineni, here I am, send me. And it, it was really, it's, it's such an easy thing to do. This is $280. And I'm not doing a sales pitch for you. I'm sharing with you how incredible it is with how we can touch Christian lives across the world. $280 has changed the life of 13 families drastically and given them hope and the word of God in their hands. What a blessing to be part of that process for God's glory. God bless. Keep looking up. Keep staying involved. Shalom.